So let's uh, get started with the the first uh, presentation. Uh, one of the, fa the the founders of this technology, Amory Grambeer. Well, hello, Amory. Amory is going to tell us uh, a bit more about the Frogon's technology, so I'm going to hand over to Jean-Emmanuel, who's going to ask questions, right? Yes, absolutely. Amory, let me just uh, put your slides up. Yeah, in the meantime, um, maybe I can, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, all of you. Thank you for those of you who are physically here and those of you who are following the conference online. So, Jean Emmanuel, I think uh, time has come to take a little bit of perspective and, and, and come back to some of the fundamentals behind the technology, uh, the programs technology, that is, and OP3FT. Because OP3FT is really what is driving the project. So, Amory. You're the chairman of the board of directors, and you're the co-creator or co-inventor of uh, Frogren's technology. So once again, I would like uh, to thank you again for uh, being with us this afternoon, having accepted our invitation. This uh, conference will be uh, mainly on the, the ecosystem, the ecosystem and how the ecosystem uses Frogren's technology. Since the creation of OP3FT in 2012, the uh, Frogren's uh, uh, technology um, has been driven by uh, this ecosystem, uh, right? Absolutely. Um, the ecosystem, uh, uh, the internet ecosystem is, is changing, uh, which is the, the very nature of an ecosystem. It's, it's a living being almost. It, with new innovations, it's, it changes. Its scope changes, its shape changes with Alexi Tamas, we uh, started to reflect about this new software layer on internet about 15 years ago. And uh, ever since, we've tried to uh, uh, give a lot of attention to the ecosystem, to keep harmony. And of course, also keeping in mind what the future would be like. When we created OP3FT in 2012, we decided to beef up uh, our teams and we uh, are employing 35 people today who are working on OP3, uh, for OP3FT on programs. And so this is a representation of the internet ecosystem. This is not the programs ecosystem, it is the internet um, ecosystem. And uh, we could actually remove the programs uh, logo here. So there are certain players who existed before Frogren's technology and who will still be around after Frogren's technology. Um, let me just say a few words about this technology, or this ecosystem, rather. It, as you can see, it has four uh, sections. I don't know how well you can read this. I don't know if you can see this for those who are following this and streaming. There is a red box. The red box represents end users. Around the end users, the end users um, represent approximately 3.2 billion people who are connected to internet through using different modes. And we wanted to represent what is around the end users. We're talking about publishing, we're talking about um, internet production or, uh, or, or content production. and. What these end users have around them is mainly content producers. Uh, it could be small websites or sites. It could be big sites. It could be very big sites like search engines or uh, the social media. And there are commercial, non-commercial activities, e-commerce, corporate as well. And these different boxes represent uh, these organizations that develop content. For Frogans, this is essential because it is a technology that is used to publish uh, content on multiple platforms, multiple screens. In this, uh, so in the gray um, boxes, 
you will also find a number of players who have been around for many years, um, access providers, for example, um, so internet access that is, mobile uh, organizations, uh, the companies that manufacture operating systems, and uh, additional services for end users. So there are other parts. The end user, it doesn't see much. So OP3FT and uh, Fragrance, Uh, once again, introduced uh, 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 an additional software layer on top of internet, on top of email, uh, or, or and 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 by doing this, we discovered um, a, a range of of stakeholders, of players, people don't really know, and but who are operating um, internet very quickly. Let me uh, tell you who they are. So. If you take a look at the blue boxes, we have a lot of uh, content production organizations, web designers, HTML integrators, web developer developers. We have uh, companies as well, companies who are developing uh, different types of uh, technologies to uh, facilitate uh, the publication of uh, content, um, communication or uh, companies who serve um, some of the players that are in the gray boxes. Now, if we move down, we go into the operational layers, which I, you will see in greater detail in the next slide. So these are the operators. Uh, so these are the green boxes, as a matter of fact. So these are operations. Uh, um, and we have online data productions, so we have uh, domain name registration organizations, and hosting companies as well, um, domain name registrars. As you may know, some companies operate internet extensions, .fr, for example, um, like VeriSign, for example. And uh, we are seeing more and more operators with more and uh, more uh, internet extensions. and. Um, all these different players uh, are on the infrastructure level of uh, the system. And last but not least, moving to the purple color, this is the standardization. Uh, there are a number of big players. The World Wide Web Consortium, for example, they uh, standardize uh, technology. The Internet Task Force as well. The Unicode, ICANN, ISOC, I won't mention them all. And we have a number of uh, research experts, consultants, who deal with uh, internet governance, for example, and so on. So once again, we have this very large ecosystem. And uh, the fragrance technology uh, will be bringing benefits to this ecosystem, we're going to explain what these benefits uh, are. It's a smooth, gentle revolution which is brought in this uh, ecosystem. And again, this ecosystem which is already in place. Thank you, Amory. You talked about Frogan's technology and you insisted on it being a new software layer, which conceptually um, could be difficult to grasp. Would you develop, please? Sure. Here it is. And some of you may be familiar with this. I think a similar representation of operational layer is also used by ICANN. At the, the bottom, you have the physical network, which is used for data. Right above it, you have the traffic and routing layer, which, of course, includes the do domain name system, DNS, um, HTTP protocols, and so on. We will come back to this. We have Paul Makapetris, who is with us here. He's right there, right there. He's the one who invented DNS. And once you have the infrastructure, the traffic, you have gener generic applications that you can use, use to run things. Email, FTP, file transfer uh, protocol, 
IRC, remember, that's instant messaging. And um, in 89, uh, 1990, uh, world, the World Wide Web, invented by Tim in Geneva. Fragrance, 15 years or 20 years later, is bringing this additional software layer, very similar to email, for example, with Alexi Tamas. Alexi Tamas, who is the co-creator, co-inventor. Yes, I, I mentioned him at the beginning. Uh, how I would never forget to mention him. We've been partners for a number of years now. And um, we realized uh, that by nature, internet was an open network, and because it was open, you could introduce generic applications and you, without having to ask for permissions to an authority or a government. And we decided to do this uh, in a good way, in a serious way. Um, and the result is the fragrance technology. So it's a new layer which enables new usages. So behind the fragrance technology, there will be new uh, inventions of new uh, usages. Dans tous les usages des couches logicielles, all uses of software layers are complementary and interoperable. Absolutely. So coming back to our ecosystem, because introducing a software layer on the internet is one thing, but creating uses is another thing. And thanks to the introduction of the software layer on the internet, we have an ecosystem that needs to be generated in order to use it and benefit by it. Yes, so we're talking about the ecosystem for content publishing on the internet. There are other very technical ecosystems, but for us it's a publishing technology which is simple and secured that aims at working with different players that we uh, saw in the previous slide. So we are at the core of usage, adoption, and creation. And we are the content publishing operator on the front line in this uh, representation. And the economy uh, is around this uh, content publisher, because whoever the content publisher is, for whatever kind of reason, internet, internet they need a certain number of uh, professionals hosts, hosting providers, software publishers, ag agencies, integrators, developers, etc. So our purpose is to bubble up the Frogans technology. Now that well, we've, we'll talk about this later, but we've been working for quite a few years now on giving legitimacy to the lower layers of the internet, and we're moving up bubbling up to the ecosystem, which is that of publishing. And this is what we'll talk about tonight, but the ecosystem is developing, and some players already aggregated on this uh, small cloud. So of course, this slide is not exhaustive, uh, but maybe we can mention a few things. Yes, very quickly. And I'm sorry if some of you can't see their names when they've been early adopters alongside with us. But of course, the project aims at giving, at putting the, uh, the light on others and not on ourselves. But um, I just wanted to remind you that the few logos that you can see here, uh, by the way, I didn't know what uh, in Chinese, these uh, signs meant, but it means my brand, apparently. And in these logos, you have two arbitration centers in the field of traditional domain names that we have went to meet, and they signed an MOU with uh, OP3FT to arbitrate in case of any dispute arising on the nomadic um, technological layer provided by Frogans. And in Asia, there is ADNDRC that signed an agreement with OP3F3 and in the US, the uh, forum, which uh, used to be the arbitration mediation forum. Um, so over the last few months, 
OP3FT went to the legal uh, to work on, on legal aspects, on brands, and a lot of uh, work has been achieved throughout the world with the brand holders who will be uh, content publishers in a digital world. Uh, Esther is going to speak later. And the FCR account administrators, for those of you who are not familiar with them, these are um, administrators of uh, Frogan's addresses. So it comes from uh, domain names from the web. And for those of you who attended our previous conferences, you know that we uh, very quickly had companies like Scythe Brands, Pro Domains, Ubitetics, that showed their interest in the project very much upstream, and they presented. Uh, I could also mention AFNIC because it's uh, also very important, because in order to create solid basis, technical basis for the project, we had the Dot Frogans uh, extension that was uh, accepted. So we signed the registry contract with ICANN in 2013, and AFNIC is our partner for the technical operation. But the Frogans technology or not domains name in dot Frogans, but dot Frogans is helpful in order to name an architecture service to uh, solve the Frogans address addresses. So we wanted to secure the project on the internet via this uh, means. Thank you. So in conclusion, after this presentation, which was about encouraging jobs, uh, innovation, and economic development, I just wanted to say that these are not just words, and these missions have always been part of the OP3FT mission. It's part of our permanent objectives. Yes, in conclusion, I just wanted to remind you that this is the raison d'etre of the project and what motivated both of us, Alexi and myself. We didn't want to work just on a beautiful technology. A beautiful technology is just a consequence of our main idea. We felt, well, it's incredible that uh, some inventions in the field of internet, in the field of digital technologies, have generated such a, a, a huge number of activities, businesses, innovation, jobs. I think we all know that. We've been working on this topic for 15 years to make it a global opportunity. And the open standard idea, the Frogan's technology is not a raw garden. It's, it's a walled garden. It's not closed. OP, OP3FT is a French fund with a mission of general interest. They, it owns the Frogan's technology to make it an open standard with legal charters and technical implementations which are very robust and very rigorous so that businesses and activities can be built on that technology. So our mission and our primary mission today is to start seeing who would be able to develop flows and activities and business. And our object is to turn the light on the ecosystem to demonstrate those people who have an interest in the project. Well, thank you very much indeed, Amori. Stefan. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Jean-Emmanuel, for moderating this interview.